Hey makers, this is Dravin, and in this episode, I am going to talk about the modern table control in the Power Apps. This is again the new control which is available as a preview in Power Apps. So let's explore this feature in depth with me. So first of all, let me show you the end outcome over here. So this is the modern table control which I have displayed on my screen over here. This modern control has the very good user interface available over here. You can see that this is the beautiful header. This is the different rows that are available in the data source. And at the bottom as well, it is showing that how many rows my table control has at this moment. So over here, you can see that title, category, status, assigned to, uh, resolved on and created. These are the different column I have added over here. Also, one important thing here is that it is supporting any complex type column as well. So let's say for an example, here I do have a category as a choice column or status as a choice column and assigned to as a people picker column. Still, it is showing perfectly into my table control. Another good thing about this table control is that on every column, it is supporting the sort feature in out of the box. So just imagine I just wanted to sort by Z to A. I can simply click on that and that sort operation will internally handle over here. Here, I have not write any single line of code. Just imagine if I need to perform the same operation on my data table control or maybe classic gallery control, how much effort does it take? I need to write whole sort function for me that will take lots of time, right? Now this modern function or modern table control has made this life much more easier. Now let's try to explore this feature in depth. So here I'm creating one blank screen for myself and let's add the table control. But before that, make sure that you activate this feature from the setting gear. Click on the setting gear and go to the updates and make sure that from new features, maybe you will enable the modern control and themes feature. If this feature is disabled, probably you will not be able to use this modern table control for yourself. So make sure that it is activated. Now let's add the table control. For that, go to the insert menu and from here, make sure that you select this table control over here. This control is in preview at this moment. Let's add that on the screen. And this is how it looks like. Now let's configure our data source over here. And here I'm configuring my IT help desk data source. So I'm just connecting my SharePoint list over here. And this will add and this will create the table for me. So you can see that this type of table control has been added perfectly on the screen. Now let's explore the different property of the table control. But before that, if you haven't followed me on my Twitter and Instagram so far, do follow me because these are the platform where I'm uploading short content on Power Platform. Select your table control and make it big. And you have observed one more thing over here that my table control is also supporting the scrolling capability in the native manner itself. Let's say this is my table control looks like. Let's say for an example, here I want to configure different fields. Then probably I can simply click on add and here I can add the different fields over here. So let's say created, created by uh, this type of column. I just wanted to add over here so I can simply select it and click on add and it will add all of those columns over here for me. So you can see that this has added this kind of horizontal scroll as well. So this table control offers this kind of horizontal and vertical scroll together on the screen. Now let me go to the field and let me just add one ID column as well over here, which is the out of the box SharePoint column. And now let me just arrange these columns properly. So let's say for an example, if I just wanted to arrange this column on the top, so I can just drag it and this is how it looks like. Now let's try to explore the different features of the table control. So over here underneath behavior, we can see the different properties that we need to understand. So the first property is reflow behavior. Now what is reflow? Let me try to explain you. So let's say for an example, right now this table is looking like this. But let's say for an example, if I make it its resolution smaller like this, you can see that it has converted this kind of list structure like this. So table is converted into this type of list, which is called as a reflow behavior. Reflow means as soon as your resolution is becoming smaller, it will change the interface of the grid. Okay, so this is called as a reflow behavior and in reflow as well, it's providing you the great feature like let's say for an example here as well, you can select your sort by column and sort order and click on apply button and this looks really cool and amazing. So for smaller kind of mobile, this kind of table view is really, really helpful for us. Now let's do one more level up. 
let me just uh, make it big and let's configure this property so reflow now you understand what exactly it is let's say for an example on response units you don't want to change the interface then probably you can simply choose grid only or list only so depending on the selection let's say if you choose grid only no matter if it is getting smaller or larger it will still show into grid mode only and similar way if i convert it into list only mode so it will always show the list only mode like this okay but reflow is really cool i personally love this feature a lot then another option is enable sorting so over here you can see that every column on the table control has a out of the box sort feature itself like traditional gallery and data table control we don't need to write sort function customly over here no matter what kind of column you have so let's say for an example here if i if i am showing you my uh, list of sharepoint here you can see that this is my people picker column this is my choice column this is my date time column and this is my text column but the sort feature will work for any column so let's say for an example here i'm searching by assign to which is my people picker column it is perfectly sorting the value over here or even let's say if one of them applying uh, created date it is also working absolutely fine or let's say this is my id number column and on that i just want to apply it it is working absolutely fine so this is really a game changer but let's say for an example if you don't want to allow sort feature on some of the column then probably you can turn it off and then at the time sort feature will disappear from here you can see that this sort is now disappear now let me just turn it on because it's a really useful feature and then we have one more feature available called allow range selection now what this feature mean by so let's say for an example right now let's say you i have selected this control okay and now let's say for an example if you are copying any value over here and let's say for an example you want to paste it somewhere you can easily do it because you have uh, you have enabled that option for yourself so let's say for an example from your grid if you enable allow range selection which means that whatever range that you have selected it allow the copy feature for that feature okay if you turn it on and then if you select any element over here and if you try to copy it and paste it somewhere it will not allow you so make sure that if you want to provide that kind of functionality make sure you enable this feature for yourself okay apart from that it offers other uh, other style and theming feature as well so let's say for an example if you want to change header text if you want to change header font size font color header font weight you can simply use it over here you can choose the appropriate color palette font font size font color and font weight as well from here i am not going to more into styling and theming this is something which you can explore in your free time let me talk about another interesting thing over here sometimes we have a requirement that okay i have this grid control over here and when i select that i should be redirected to its appropriate form control so what i have done here is in the similar type of grid i created one form control over here and uh, what i'm doing here is this is my table control so tables on select i'm just maintaining one set variable where i'm selecting table selected item and then i'm navigating myself to the next screen and in next screen i already do have the form control okay and in form control this is my form control and in if you look at the form this is my data source and if you go to the item i just provided the selected record over here now what happen here is as soon as i select any record from here let's say i'm selecting record number 10 you can see that that record is perfectly available over here so you can also write on select event on your data table control as well now let me talk about couple of things related to this table control so let's say for an example sometimes we have a requirement where we need to add one additional column in the table like action button and let's say where i need to add some sort of edit button or delete button something like that right so at the time it is not allowing me to add with the table control because table control only accept the value from your data source or the collection that you are supplying to it for that kind of action and let's say for an example sometimes we need to provide some sort of checkbox kind of functionality over here for that this control is not useful over here at the time uh, probably you just go with the gallery control and doing the things like that but apart from overall this control is really very positive and saves lots of our time in terms of development now let me talk about one more interesting thing let's test out one more thing that how many record this control can hold over here okay and for that what i'm doing here is i have created one more page where i'm loading more than 5000 record for myself so here i have loaded more than 10000 record in one of the table control this is my dataverse table i have connected over here and you can see here right now it is showing me 5000 plus rows 
Now let's check the reality. So now let me scroll down a little bit. And as soon as I scroll down, it will start loading the another set of records. Let's say for example, if I'm scrolling down over here, see this is how it looks like. It is loading and now you can see that this is showing the count as 1000 now. So it is loading the row in 500, 500 type of bulk. Okay, let me scroll down, scroll down a little bit. And as soon as you reach to 1000, it will load another 500, which is 1500, right? This is how it loads the data over here. Let's scroll down a little bit to see how much more it read. And see, this control is little bit buggy as well. So see, I scroll down and it is showing 500, 5000 plus. Okay, but actually it is not 5000 plus. If I scroll down a little bit at the bottom, it will still show in few minutes around 2000 plus or 1500 plus. Okay, let's see. Scroll, 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 scroll. See, on my screen it's 5000 plus, but now it is showing 2000, right? When you scroll down, sometimes it, it just appear as 5000 plus, but actually it is 2000 at this moment. Okay, let's say, let me load again. And you can see that it's still loading the data. <clears throat> see, it is showing 5000 plus, but I think it is more than 200 plus at this moment. Let it to be loaded. See, now it is showing 2500, right? Definitely it is loading more than 2000 and probably it will work and load the rest of the data as well. I'm not going into too much scroll at the downwards. And over here on this larger data as well, the scroll is working fine. So let's say for an example, if I'm going on the top over here and let's say I just wanted to sort by smaller to larger. Okay. Then this year you can see 1970. And, and this thing is obviously working fine. And let's see if I do larger to smaller, this is the latest one and it is showing the proper indexing as well over here. So looks cool. And let's see, even if I'm doing by country, it is showing properly Z to A and A to Z perfectly over here, right? And even if I'm doing here, let me just add one more column over here. Let's say adding a field called created on. Let me just add that field. So we will get a better context. So let's say I added that column and now let me just filter here like newer to older and let's see, you can see that totally 10,000 records are there, but you know, still uh, created on latest one is this one. And apart from that, we, we have all of these records over here and see all of these records are perfectly being loaded over here in the grid like this, right? Isn't it cool? So for larger data as well, this control is a plus one and thumbs up from my side. Now. That's it for overall table control. Now tell me in the comment section, what are the new features which you can expect from this table control from Microsoft side? From my point of view, this table control will again, we can make it stronger if Microsoft do some more enhancement, like including some sort of search functionality as well, like we have in model driven application or in SharePoint, if it is included natively with this table control, that is really helpful. Another thing is that if there is some sort of flexibility, if we can add any additional columns like icon column or something that is also a plus one into this kind of table control that makes the life much more simpler right so these are a few wishes i do have from this table control but overall it's plus one from my side and it's an amazing control it has some minor bugs that i, I i've shown you like that row number bug but probably hopefully in the future they will solve this problem so that's it for today tell me in the comment section what do you think about this table control and what you want me to try with table control, tell me your use case as well. If you are for the first time to my channel, make sure you hit thumbs up and subscribe my channel. And if you want to follow me on Twitter, Instagram or any other social media handles, the links are available in the description box. And if you are looking for any paid consultation or paid training, the links are available. The website link is available in the description box. Have a look and contact me over there. With this, this is Ruveen signing off. See you in the next session with some amazing content. Till then, have a great day. Goodbye.